Hello again, everyone, and welcome to another edition of RF Podlooza, a podcast by and for advertising people. Before we get started, we'd ask you to do us a simple favor. Please subscribe to our channel and like this video. Now, this week we travel to the city of Ann Arbor, Michigan, one of America's greatest college towns, and we meet with Jan Muleman, CEO and founder of the Regroup Agency. Jan has been very prominent in the development of our industry over the last several decades. She has seen it all, from the mergers and acquisitions to spin-offs, clients' wins and losses, as well as the emergence of digital technology and its effect on our industry. We are very privileged to have Jan Muleman as our guest this week. So let's meet Jan. I'd like to welcome Jan Muleman to RF Podlooza. Um, she is the CEO and founder of the Regroup Agency. And uh, Jan, I understand you have a real important milestone coming up soon. Can you tell us a little we bit do. about that? We do. It is our 20th anniversary as Regroup. Regroup is actually the fourth generation of a company that I founded many, many years ago in 1974 and had the good fortune of gaining a, a little client that grew into a big client, grew the agency, determined that we had a, a lot going for us. We sold the agency, folded into a, a much larger agency. That agency sold to Omnicom. Then we spun out of that agency and uh, joined Fitch, which was an international design consultancy, and that sold, and that sold, and that sold. And in 2003, we bought ourselves back and became Regroup. Well, you said, that sounds like a history of the advertising industry over the last few decades with all the M&As and spinoffs and, yes. uh, and client shifts. Going back to the very beginning of your lineage, you started with a really well-known brand name, which makes and um, sells one of my favorite food groups. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Well, we had the good fortune to be approached by Tom Monahan of Domino's Pizza because he thought he had failed to respond to a protest that had been filed against his registration of the name Domino's Pizza by Domino Sugar, Amstar. And he thought he had lost the use of the name and he was going to pursue it in court, but he wanted to make sure that in the event that he lost, he could change the name. And in fact, five years later, when we were the agency of record for him, uh, he lost in a in district court down in Atlanta, lost the use of the name. We actually uh, switched out the inside graphics of the signs and the patches and the, and the logos on the boxes to Pizza Dispatch, kept opening stores. And then when he won at appellate court, we switched it all back. your agency's background and your background, you have a lot of retail and or franchise experience. How is that different than um, servicing a regular, um, you know, pro consumer products type brand? There is a huge difference in, in managing a multi-unit, either retail or franchise. And in a franchise organization, it's doubly complex because Franchise, franchisees are owners and they have a certain amount of autonomy. In a, in a franchise organization, you might as a corporation have the authority to say, this is your marketing program. But in reality, the, uh, the franchisee has the power to say, no, I'm not going to do it. One of the tools that you developed early on at one of the agencies through your career was um, the customer journey. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. You know, when we first started, we 
came out, my, myself and my founding partner and many of our team members came out of the Ohio State Department of Industrial Design. We did not start out in advertising. We started out really holistically looking at what is what is the business problem? Where is this communication channel breaking down? What do we need to do? What are all the touch points that we need to cover? And at the time we called it seamless communication so that you were making sure that every touch point was delivering on the brand promise, delivering the customer experience that you wanted to have. And we were completely channel agnostic. That actually led us at the time into retail store design. And it led us into a complete 360 look at what was the customer experience. And we were really pretty far ahead of where the, the advertising industry was at the time. So one of the things that impressed me about the Regroup was that you have a really good, solid set of core values. So why don't we address that? Okay. Well, one of our key core values is, is people first. And by people first, it, it means a lot of different things. One is it means that for our employees, we are committed to providing an environment where we help them grow and achieve as much as they possibly can. For our clients, it is that we are working very collaboratively with them. We are partnering with them. And for their customers, their end users, it is that we are acknowledging that all people want to be treated with respect and that how we deliver our communication to them has to be respectful at the same time that it is informative and persuasive. You know, I've uh, run a couple of agencies, and um, one of the things that always troubled me is we did what I would call accordion staffing. You know, it would expand and contract depending mm -hmm. upon clients. Now, I grew up in a really big agency where they hardly fired anyone. And, um, you know, there's an old adage in our industry, I forget who said it, maybe David Ogilvy, that each day all of our assets go in and out of the elevators. Yep. So, obviously, when you lose a client, sometimes you have no choice but to let people go. But how do you feel about keeping that core group of people together? Well, we're really proud of the fact that we have. Well, that's great. A long time. And... And we have obviously added new team members as we've grown. And I would say sometimes we keep people to a fault, but that is the advantage of being independent. Sure. When you are independent, you write the checks and you get to decide, okay, we're going through a down period. Let's look and see how long do we think this is gonna last? What are we going to do to get out of it? And then how can we how can we manage? What are we willing to risk in order to keep the good people that we have together as a team? You know, that that happens. Agencies go up and down all the time. Sure, yeah. We we like being able to make those decisions ourselves. I've been in an environment where it was dictated to me and it's not fun. I bet you that had something to do with a holding company. <laughs> yeah. They, 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 they uh, answer to the beat of Wall Street, and if you can't increase your profits yeah. every year, which, um, you know, maybe some years breaking even isn't a bad thing if you can keep your culture together. And uh, so that leads me right into um, some of the biggest topics in our industry today, chat, GPT, and AI. Does, do you have any philosophy on that? Or um, how, is it still developing, as most people are, I guess? But I would say we are still developing that. We have written a policy for our team on the use of that. 
It includes transparency to our clients when we do use any kind of an AI technology. Obviously in, in the media world, media has been using AI for quite a while. And so even, you know. Yeah, but that, that's a little different yeah. than creative. I mean, because algorithmic media yeah. has been around. I mean, yeah, it's, using, it's being more efficient. But when you get into the creative area, I think it's a lot different. Well, we are encouraging our teams to explore and use it and see how we can incorporate it into the work that we do. And they are. But again, as I said, we are being really transparent. We, we, it's, it's never a strictly an AI generated product. Sure. It is, we are using it for research. We are using it to concept. And then our, our creative teams are choosing what elements of that are, should be incorporated in any solutions that we come up with. So we're approaching it cautiously, but it's a tool. Sure. Uh, and it's yeah. going to be here, and we're going to use it. So okay. we, we have to figure out what that is. Uh, you just want to make sure the tool is put in the right hands, hence the um, focus on your people and your culture. I was looking through your uh, work that your agency has done, the creative work, and you've done some great stuff. Why don't you tell me about some of your campaigns? Well, you know, one of the... One of the clients that we have enjoyed working with and feel we have really contributed to their success is DTE. DTE is a energy utility. They are, uh, and as a utility, they are in a low engagement category. And often you find that utilities don't do much in terms of marketing and advertising and talking on a regular basis to their, their customers. What we have found that people feel better about their energy company, their utility, when they have had communications from them. And that includes advertising. That's great. And um, there's a campaign that I saw um for the University of Michigan, Wash Your Hands campaign, which featured some really uh, pop art, I guess for lack of a better term. Tell me about that one. That was done for the University of, of Michigan Health System, which is now called U of M Health or Michigan Medicine. And it was an internal campaign when they were trying to really raise their scores for safety and so this campaign was developed so that we had buttons, we had posters that went in the bathrooms, and it Great was- Great posters, by the way. <laughs> yeah, they were, and they're very fun. They're, they're the, oh my God, the invasion of the hand monsters kind <laughs> of thing. Um, and it got tremendous attention. It was very well received by the internal audiences, by the docs and the nurses, and it actually helped change their behavior. So, um, sort of changing um, the topic a little bit, one thing that's really of interest to me, maybe it's a pet peeve, I don't know, but um, I see, and you know, we're all going through the digital transformation, right? And um, it's, it's, you know, Advertising is a lot different today than it was in the 80s. Um, my feeling is that digital has dumbed down the advertising process a bit. And I was wondering if you have an opinion on that. I do think that there is a bit of a trend back to brand and brand and understanding the importance of brand consistency. And I, I do think that it is, I think that people, consumers recognize that. I mean, consumers are gonna get tired of just seeing, the, having a bunch of digital ads flashed at them sure. every time they launch a browser. It, it, is, it is getting to the wallpaper 
Yeah. You know, remember, remember when we called that some ads wallpaper? Come yeah. On. Yeah. Digital advertising is getting to be wallpaper. So, um, so I couldn't um, interview someone like yourself, uh, being from where I am without asking about RFPs. And so what role do, do RFPs play in your uh, business development process? Well, they are a very important part. And yes, thank you. We have actually won a client that we found on our Palooza. So thank you so much for that support. Wow. And you, you know, RFPs are are probably forever going to be part of an agency's business development process. What what we try to do is to be really selective of what ones we pursue and recognizing that we have to have something of relevance that we can offer them. And that's another core value or philosophy, at least, that I have, which is every time you talk to a customer, whether that is in a prospect mode where you are, are saying who you are and what you do, you always need to leave them with something of value. So we try to gift as much intelligence as we can in our RFP responses. And the, the most recent one that we, that we did, thanks to, to your program, is they sent out an RFP that was a series of questions. It was more like an RFI, but it was a series of questions that let us shine because we could answer their questions with our experience that was relevant to them. And that gives them some, what we are feeling is in today's world, having a, a relationship of trust with your audience is getting increasingly difficult. Mm -hmm. You know, what is truth? And yeah, and that's true. <laughs> well, yeah, we, we've been through that, haven't we? <laughs> yeah, the media isn't helping a whole lot. Mm. So um, we are focusing a lot more on, on, in fact, this client that we just won, mm. thank you, is really their goal is they want their customer to trust them. That's That's our assignment is... Help us gain their trust. Let me ask the question, because you're, you're on a roll okay. here. So um, in today's advertising environment, there, there are certain things that I think I believe, and I know you believe, that are really important. And um, authenticity is a word I hear a lot, and trust mm -hmm. is a word I hear a lot. Uh, how, do you, how does that fit into Regroup's philosophy? They are a very important part. And yes, thank you. We have actually won a client that we found on our Palooza. So thank you very much for that support. And, you, you know, RFPs are, are probably forever going to be part of an agency's business development process. What, what we try to do is to be really selective of what ones we pursue and recognizing that we have to have something of relevance that we can offer them. And that's another core value or philosophy, at least, that I have, which is every time you talk to a customer, whether that is in a prospect mode where you are, are saying who you are and what you do, you always need to leave them with something of value. So we try to gift as much intelligence as we can 
in our RFP responses. And the, the most recent one that we that we did, thanks to, to your program, is they sent out an RFP that was a series of questions. It was more like an RFI, but it was a series of questions that let us shine because we could answer their questions with our experience that was relevant to them. What we turned to, we turned to a professional um, researcher and educator, Kent Grayson out of Northwestern Kellogg School. And he has developed a three part model for trust. And at the base is performance. So you have to be able to perform or competence, he calls it competence. You have to be able to have competence and deliver what you say you're going to deliver. Above that is to your, your point, honesty, transparency, authenticity. There's that level where people have to trust that you are being open and honest with them. And then at the top is benevolence. And that is that people have to believe that you care about them. So obviously you have to have competence or you wouldn't be in business. In today's world, it's really important that you are transparent and honest and that they understand who you are, not just what you do. And then on top of that is that they have to believe that you care, that you're doing it for them. Yeah, well, when when you get right down to it, that's what effective branding is all about. It's making, projecting the brand in an authentic way that um, creates an emotional bond. And that's that shows that there's some level of care and trust there, I believe. So, well, Jan, this has been great. Um, very interesting stories. Um, Congratulations on your uh, 20th anniversary because in this in this in the last two decades it's been really tough for a, a startup well not that you're completely a startup but a new agency to last two decades so um, we really appreciate you being on our podcast good luck to you and happy anniversary thank you so much Roger it has been great I have enjoyed our conversation.